Friday night at the uh, he'll be in Westbury at the space he'll be at the space at Westbury with Richie Canada from the uh, Billy Joel band. Uh, they will be at the uh, state of the art venue space at Westbury, which I have to admit I don't even know where that is. I mean, I, I, I live on Long Island, don't even know where that is. I mean, I have to ask Bernie where that is, and then. Uh, he's got a charity event coming up. All right, uh, I will get through all this, and that's Bernie's typical, uh, uh, his yearly annual hillside uh, food uh, dinner uh, and the auction and everything else. Sweeney's involved in that. And we welcome in uh, number 51 right now. He puts down his guitar for a minute, and he uh, joins us. Welcome, Bernie. How are you? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you guys doing? Good. Fine. Thank you. How's everything? Good. Everything's great, man. Just uh, finished my first semester in, uh, in school. Oh, that's right. You went to college, right? Yes, uh, I am the oldest freshman in town now. How does it feel like they? you look over uh, and they look and there's Bernie Williams sitting next to him. So, I mean, the kids must be going crazy, right? Well, you know, I'll tell you what, a lot, a lot of these, uh, a lot of the kids that weren't even born when I was uh, playing. They so. still know who you are. <laughs> they still, you, you know what, uh, you know, they still all know who you are, that's for sure. So, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, so what are you studying? Well, I am uh, pursuing a degree in jazz performance at Manhattan School of Music. A jazz, okay, so you're in a special music school in Manhattan, jazz, Manhattan School of Music. And are you there? Yep. How many hours a week are you matriculating? I'm a full-time student. Last, last semester I had 18 credits. This semester I have 15. So you're there, so you're, you're there a lot, right? That is a lot. I go there from Monday to Thursday. Uh, I spent quite, quite, a, you know, quite a long time there. Really? So yeah. what was the motivation? Other than our, our music appreciation, what was the motivation? Well, I tell you what, you know, I, uh, I've been, you know, that there's no, uh, no mystery of my love for music, you know, over the right. years, even when I was playing baseball. And I just, you know, wanted to do it the right way. I went to a performing arts high school, and I know that when I was done playing the game, I wanted to do something related to music. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, I had, you know, actually I woke up one morning and I said, you know what? I, I never finished my degree. I, why, you know, why don't you just, I just go to school and finish my degree? That's what I should do. And then I, I picked up the, uh, you know, uh, the phone, called a few people and I try to get my, myself into this, uh, school, uh, education, uh, situation and I'm, I'm having the time of my life and you know, it has been uh, rejuvenating my, my life. All right. Let me ask you the, uh, just let me ask you the obligatory question this way and not make it all about A-Rod. Considering that generation that you just came out of and you played and played brilliantly in that generation, okay? And you were a guy who probably played for the years you were in the major leagues, probably played in more winning games than anybody who played in the major leagues, okay? You played on wonderful teams for the most part, except for the first couple of years. You had great success, but clearly there was a lot going on. How do you think the fans, how do you think baseball, or as an ex-player, how do you judge this era when it comes to dealing with so many of your colleagues having been steroid-induced? I think it's really sad. Uh, I think at the time, uh, a lot of us didn't, you know, my, you know, I'll tell you what, my frame of mind was, you know, I know that everybody, you know, a lot of people are doing it. And I know, I know it's part of the culture of the game right now, but I am going to prove to people and to prove to myself that I can still be successful at this game and not do any of that stuff. And uh, that Did was, it you know, anger pretty, you? Did it anger you that people were doing it? I think it was, uh, for me, it was more of a challenge okay. because I just took it up on, on myself to try to be successful. And, and even though I saw that, Maybe physically I was at a disadvantage. Uh, the game of baseball is it's a pretty funny that way. You know, it, it, it's not only the physical aspect, but what makes you success, successful is also your mental, your instincts, and your, your drive. And that, that's a lot of things that uh, steroids cannot give you. You know, it can give you, it cannot give you a heart, it cannot give you drive, it cannot give you a lot of stuff that is intangible. And uh, I just kind of wrote uh, the game and I played the game, you know, writing on that uh, motto and, uh, you know, I, I really can hold my 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 hold my health hold my head high, 
uh, knowing that I did it the right way. All right. Now, you were – everyone knows you were a little different as a player. You know, you, you looked at things a little differently. And, and when you hear – and you got to stick up for yourself because when you get these old Yankees now and they talk about you, you should see the things they say about you, that you were asleep <laughs> on the couch five minutes before the game. I that, was you know, visualizing. They, I had was a visualizing. Wake, they had to wake you up to go out there and hit. I mean, and that – you know, and they said that's why you were so good in the clutch because you were basically just – just waking up and you didn't realize how much pressure there was out there. That's the beauty of this game, just to know that there's no set way of approaching this game and being successful. As long as you get your results, it, it didn't matter. You know, it didn't matter. Is that uh, true? How, was you know, it true? Went about it. Was it true? Was, were you napping a lot of the time before <laughs> games and stuff? I, 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 I was known to get a little bit of rest before the game, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did I a to, dinner. I, got, I have to get my mind clear. I did a dinner with Andy Pettit uh, in December, and Andy said Bernie was amazing. We'd be looking for him. He'd be asleep on the couch. <laughs> Man, you know how how stories. You know, you start getting a life of its own. You know, after you know retire. You know, they get bigger and bigger. Yep. So, you know, I, I I would not be surprised if ten years from now they'll be saying that I would. Uh, I had a little uh, bed over there. Uh, you're right next to my locker room, and I would just roll off the bed and start hitting. But it's a funny thing because I've asked Joe Torre this. I've asked Derek Jeter this. I've asked uh, Joe Girardi this. They all say the same thing. You were such a great clutch hitter because you could go to the plate relaxed at those moments and that the game – People try to slow the game down, and you were able to slow the game down in those moments. Do you, and in seriousness, do you think that's why you were so good in the clutch? Well, I think that a lot of it has to do with being relaxed, but the relaxation came from the preparation. And uh, I knew, uh, as long as I knew that mentally I was ready for whatever they threw at me, I done my research. I know what the pitcher was going to throw. I knew that you know what I needed to work on my game to get it better. And, and it was a lot of it was a lot about peace of mind and having that security that I was ready and I was prepared to do it. And then I could just you know go out there and uh, just trust my preparation and uh, just let it let it rip.